Right, so George Galloway has given what is frankly a masterclass in how to handle our pathetic media, their quizzling questions, their establishment shilling, and make them really, really uncomfortable as they desperately try to get that gotcha. He's been around the block too many times. He's dealt with them on too many occasions. But he also shows the kind of answers politicians can give if they want to. If they weren't so worried about towing the party line or staying on message and not endangering corporate donations and the like. But equally, the deflection onto his supporters afterwards shows how willing the media are to play Rishi Sunak's game after his manufactured protester crisis speech last night as well. Right, so George Galloway's interview with Sky News' Sam Coates following Rishi Sunak's speech at the podium outside of 10 Downing Street last night, Sunak's weaponization of a racial and democratic crisis in the UK, ended up largely out overshadowed as Galloway in no uncertain terms said what he thought of Sunak, and indeed what he thought of mainstream media questioning at the same time. The Galloway interview is getting shared far, far more than Sunak's little turn at the lectern, um, and there's a very good reason for that. This video is seven minutes long. It's impossible to edit it down to something shorter than that because, frankly, every second of it is exactly how all politicians should deal with really dishonest questioning. Watch this. I'm standing here at George Galloway's campaign headquarters. George Galloway, did you just watch the Prime Minister's speech? I didn't watch it, but I understood the first part of it related to the Rochdale by-election. The Prime Minister has just said that the election of you to Parliament is beyond horrifying. What do you say to that? Well, I can understand how disappointed he is about the by-election. The Conservative Party, which is the government of the country, was crushed, not just by me, but by an independent candidate that no one had ever heard of before outside of Rochdale. So it was a disastrous night for the Conservatives and a disastrous night for Labour. I got more votes than Labour and the Conservatives and the Liberal Democrats and the Reform Party put together, which adds up to a pretty crushing rejection of the two-party system. So I understand why he's alarmed. Um, I want you to address some of the specifics that the Prime Minister uh, said about you this evening. He said that you backed Hezbollah. Is that true? I don't know what that means, backed Hezbollah. I oppose Israel's occupation of Lebanon and I respect the right of people in occupied territory to resist their occupier. Uh, and I've done so since Hezbollah was formed and Israel occupied much of Lebanon right up to the Litani River, regularly bombing Beirut and so on. Uh, so I'm not sure what business that is of his, because you see, the Hezbollah they are a terrorist, terrorist organization. Actually, and they're he, part of the government of Lebanon, a country with which we have sovereign diplomatic relations. I had this debate with Sky's Anna Botting in 2006. It's quite an epic clip. You should watch it. More than 100 million people have. Uh, they, they said all these things about me in the by-election. And in the by-election, it was them that got crushed in the democratic process. So I'm not sure why he would reheat it. No, the Prime Minister is saying we're that as you are... talking as if this is God. We're talking I... about little Rishi Sunak in the fag end of his Prime Ministership. Don't talk to me as if he's come down from the mount with tablets of stone. The things that he says are somehow meant to awe me. They may awe you, they don't awe me. A lot of people have just watched what the Prime Minister said. This is your opportunity to respond to what he said. Well, he says that the, uh, there are forces here at home trying to tear us apart. He is implying you are a divisive well, figure. Well, you have that, run an election campaign that has, that has tried to appeal particularly, and who not won? entirely, who to won? one section of the community. Who won the election? Me or Rishi Sunak? I've got the democratic mandate here, not Rishi Sunak. He didn't even come second. He was lucky to come third. So don't put to me statements made by Rishi Sunak as if I'm supposed to be impressed by them. We he, don't, he don't impress me much. 
We at Sky have spent some time today on the streets of Rochdale, and there are people who say that they feel intimidated by people like like you and the people that have supported you. I have just and they, and they and they have pointed have out that you have concentrated your campaign on foreign affairs, and they worry that Rochdale I, will not I be the winner. Mandate. That's my answer to you. I was just elected with a thumping majority by the electorate in Rochdale. That's all that matters to me. So why are there people in the streets of Rochdale today worried? Well, people voted yesterday and they voted for me. Why is that difficult for you to grasp? Why are there people on the streets worried? There may be people who didn't vote for me who are worried, but the majority, the thumping majority, voted for me. I've got the mandate and I'm going to the House of Commons with it. And it's a mandate, you think, to do what? Because there are people that listen to what you say, mm. what you say about whether or not Israel has a right to exist, what you say about what many Jewish people think are we, threatening we, we had slogans. We this conversation last night. Why are you reheating it? Because in the light of the Prime Minister's in Don't keep statement. telling me about the Prime Minister as if he was Moses. Do you not respect the Prime Minister? <laughs> he's, 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 I don't res Do I respect the Prime Minister? I despise the Prime Minister. And guess what? Guess what? Millions and millions and millions of people in this country despise the Prime Minister. I don't respect the Prime Minister at all. What are you planning to do next week when you arrive in Parliament? Well, I'm meeting the Speaker on Monday morning and then I'll be introduced and sworn in. I'll be escorted by the Right Honourable David Davis MP former deputy leader of the Conservative Party. I don't know why he would do that if he thought I was the kind of man you're clearly implying that I am. David Davis is one of the great parliamentarians uh, of today and this age. Uh, and I'll be taking my seat in the House of Commons and speaking for the people of Rochdale. That's what I was elected to do. And what is your message also to Keir Starmer? My message to Keir Starmer is that the skids are under you uh, in scores of Labour seats up and down the country because you've lost the trust, you've lost the Absolutely. confidence Absolutely. of millions of your traditional loyal voters. Yeah. 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 Now we have had, we have now had an election where two of the candidates have alleged intimidation. The Prime Minister referenced that intimidation in his address you on the steps of... to the Prime Minister as if that's supposed oh, to oh, impress oh, me. Oh, the, Prime oh, Minister oh, is a, the, the Prime Minister is a rather diminutive, diminished and degraded politician. He made a party political statement. I, I, I don't care about Rishi Sunak's attitude. What I care about is that the returning officer a man of unimpeachable integrity, I'm sure you'll agree, declared it a free and fair election and me as the winner. And Rishi Sunak as one of the crushed two big parties in the state. So yeah. why are two, what, so why are two are candidates... Are keep repeating the same questions to me because I have other people to talk to? So let's make this the last one, shall we? we got a party to go with. Allegations of intimidation, allegations that your supporters intimidated That's other candidates. Five what do you times think? you've said that. The returning officer declared it last night. You were there as a free and fair election, and me as the winner. And the electoral well, commission and the electoral commission today you're, have said that they're going to look and talk to the parties. You're going to have to just suck it up. I won the election. Yeah. 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 Sunak is not Moses. I do hope Sam Coates has got that message now. Indeed, it's a perfectly reasonable point to ask in light of the Tories getting rinsed in Rochdale as much as every other mainstream party did. Why Galloway or anyone else who doesn't vote Tory or doesn't support the Tories should care about what Sunak says or does or thinks. I'll never vote for Sunak. I don't care what he has to say beyond how it affects us in our daily lives, as the unelected Prime Minister made that chilling speech that Coates alluded to, which, yes, spoke about how horrifying Sunak found the prospect of Galloway being elected but used that as part of a very sinister speech to set out what might well be an extremely disturbing agenda of clampdowns on freedom of speech, of expression, of our right to protest. And in which some people are talking about Sunak possibly setting all this up to avoid a general election. 
that he would be certain to lose. Well, he'd have to put up with George Galloway a bit longer if he did that, though, wouldn't he? But although the interview started with that, at no point did Coates ask Galloway about his plans for Rochdale, congratulate him to ask him what he feels were the reasons he won. Because, of course, all of that would legitimise him. And the narrative from Sunak, which Coates seemed to obsessively hang on to, would, be, would have been harmed. We must treat him as a dissident, ostracise him, isolate him, treat him as some kind of terrorist sympathiser from within, for no other reason than he is opposed to what the establishment parties are in their loyalty to Israel and against those fighting them. So that is exactly where Sam Coates' line of questioning ended up going. But Galloway was prepared for it, and frankly handed Coates his backside on a silver platter. You don't have to like Galloway to appreciate what he did in that interview. Coates brought up Hezbollah as terrorists, for instance, and that Galloway backed them. He brushed off that notion, reminding Coates they are part of the Lebanese government. And despite that, we still have diplomatic ties with that country. As indeed Hamas are government in Gaza, and reminded Coates again that Israel have attacked and invaded Lebanon, just as they've done with Gaza here. Which is why Hezbollah exists, similar vein to why Hamas exists. A familiar pattern of Coates quoting Sunak in a question started to build by this point. Third question, third time he mentions Sunak. So Galloway ridicules him for it, and why not? Do you not have a relevant question to ask? Bear in mind Galloway had already said that at that point he hadn't seen the speech Sunak had given. Coates knew that and still told Galloway, well this is your opportunity to respond to what he said. Well ridiculing Coates seemed to be the best way to go on at that point, surely, and Sunak whilst he was at it. Coates tried shifting back, shifting tack again, saying Sunak was talking about division in society and that Galloway was one such divisive figure and then chose to talk about allegations of people in Rochdale being fearful of Galloway being their MP. Which, sure, there might be some, the sort of people who listen to Sam Coates and think what Sunak says is equivalent to the Sermon on the Mount, as Galloway chided him. But equally, we had a Labour Party that was literally trying to rig votes in one ballot station on the night of the election, resulting in the returning officers sacking one of the clerks there. Now, Sunak can talk about all this nonsense of fear-mongering, but he himself is guilty of that, as are other Tory MPs, from Robert Jenrick to Suella Braverman to Lee Anderson, stoking up hate and Islamophobia whilst they're at it. But equally, Galloway could snap back and ask who won the election, because he did, emphatically. As he said at the start of the interview, he got more votes than the Tories, Labour, the Lib Dems and Reform UK got combined. The entire establishment party spectrum. That doesn't show a populace in fear of Galloway when they voted for him. But such is the dishonesty of the line of questioning. When Coates asked him what he, pl what he plans to do next week in Parliament, finally a non-Sunak related question, Galloway gave a perfectly straight and sensible answer to him. If you ask a decent question, you'll get a proper answer. Making reference to the fact he was being presented to Parliament by a Tory MP and put to Coates why he would do that if he thought Galloway was the sort of man Coates had been trying to employ that he was. What will bother Keir Starmer? is that throughout that seven-minute interview, the only round of applause that came from those assembling around Coates, people Coates apparently felt threatened by afterwards, despite being mainly a group of women, as it was, um, was when Galloway said the skids were under Starmer as he'd lost the trust in scores of Labour seats, which we are seeing as more and more independent candidates are standing to oppose Labour MPs, failing to stand up for their constituents, and failing to oppose this genocide. Coates got... More exasperated as the interview went on, more desperate. He brought up allegations of intimidation, but at the end of the day, exactly as Galloway said, the returning officer declared it a fair election, and he won. What Sam Coates did is what we've come to expect from the mainstream media. He gave a perfect example of it. What Galloway did was anything the response to such questioning we're used to hearing, and giving responses that they deserve to get. He fought fire with fire, and when Galloway goes to Parliament next week, Expect Sunak and Starmer to get such treatment directly to their faces too, with Sunak having painted a rather large target on himself to be the first for Galloway to deal with. Not only for the dangerous talk he came out with in his speech, but also attacks on Galloway that he didn't have the courage to say to his face. You'll get the chance now. But Sunak's speech yesterday wasn't the only troublesome and concerning news coming from number 10 in the last week, as Sunak has hinted at things that could possibly amount to a police state no less. I covered that story in this video here, and I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.